Guten Morgen, Sylvia. Hi, Igor. Good morning. Uh, today we will calibrate for a single discharge station for our Danube Basin model. And last time we downloaded river discharge data for one of the final stations in the Danube Basin. Let us update uh, the C1M repository using GitHub Desktop. So which region and the name? Yeah. In fact, could we change the repository to the, uh, could we change the current branch to the develop branch? And then click fetch origin. Okay. Perfect. Could we go to the folder of see what I'm on the computer? Perfect. If we go into toolkit, interesting, it's not here. We're looking for something called calibration, but it's not here. Could we go back to GitHub desktop? Could you click history? Yeah, just beside changes towards the left. It's awesome. mm -hmm. Update that. Yeah, okay, so this is a fork of CWATM, and we want to update this fork based on the main CWATM but fetching the origin doesn't work. Could you go to current branch again? Yeah, okay, so this is the develop branch on your forked CWATM repository. Let's go to uh, um, upstream develop. So that's the upstream version is the main version of CWATM. Okay, yeah. it's, it's not happy with this. If you go back to, ch okay. Uh, could you go to current repository again? This is, this is good learning. Um, could you go to current branch again? Can you go to the bone, choose a branch to merge and to develop? To branch uh, to merge I develop into the yeah and then we choose upstream slash develop so now we're taking the main upstream version of CWM and bringing it into your branch in your fork of CWM. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay let's create a merge component Okay, awesome. So now we can, uh, I guess we can just push origin. This will push all these changes into your repository of CWATM, your fork of CWATM. Okay, so now we're caught up. So things are a little bit uh, one step more work when we have a forked repository versus when we just have a closed. Yes, repository. yes, I see. It's another. And now let's go back to the folder with see what I'm on your computer. Uh, 
how that should be. Yeah. Great. Okay. And we can go into calibration. Let's start in this way. Let's let's go to settings underscore calibration dot txt. We're going to do a few things. This is the settings file for the calibration. We'll update this. Then we will turn the familiar CWDM settings file we have for the Danube Basin and create a template version of it. That'll make sense in just a moment. And then we will update the downloaded observations from last time into a folder. So three, three things that we'll do together. The first thing we should decide is how long we should do the calibration for. So I believe we have data all the way from 1930 to near the present. But just to mm -hmm. demonstrate the calibration, maybe let's just take um, let's take 10 years, the 10 years most recent data, and that can be the dates for our calibration. Okay. Uh, let's go through step by step. So this root, could you point this to the file path of toolkit on your computer? Perfect. And you can change root PC. The, the root is used when we're using a Linux operating system. We can update it anyways, but root PC is what will be accessed here. OK, great. Now let's choose uh, the start and end date of our calibration period. So let's open the observations from last time. This goes, ah, okay, the most recent, 2010. Okay, so maybe we choose from the beginning of 2000 to the end of 2010, and we create a new, we create a new CSV file, or a new Excel file, just with this 10 years of data. Okay. Okay. So let's right away create this new Excel file and put it in this observed underscore data mm -hmm. folder. And when we create a new Excel, let's keep the top row just as a label. So it can be like date and then, then maybe the name of the station. Or just Danube is fine. Uh, this title for in the A column is not correct. Maybe we change it right away just so we know what we're doing. Right. So we, month, yeah, great. Right now it's it's month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. The calibration scheme um, may update in the future to take different dates. We have a version that takes different dates, uh, but for this particular script, we're using the month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. And we can save this, in fact, right into the folder in the calibration folder called observation data.
perfect. Inside of ob sorry, inside observed underscore data. Oh, okay. And maybe like um, we write 2000 to 2010. Can we save this as um before we yeah. save it? Can you click on that settings file to see? Yeah, let's CSV. Yeah, let's do right with CSV. That should work the best. Oh, okay. Oh, for sorry, this one. Okay, and we can take the name of this and I'll put it into the settings file. Oh, I think that was within Danube, when in fact, you must have two uh, Git folders. Yeah, yeah great. Okay, most of the stuff we won't go into detail. We can always explore it at a later point. So we keep most things as they are uh, regularly and update them as we learn more. What we can do now is let's go into the folder templates. Yeah, we can close out of the settings file. Oh, perfect, perfect. And templates underscore see what in. Now let's open up the settings underscore see what in underscore template. So we're going to transform this one to be similar to uh, the settings file we've been using for the Danube Basin. There's only a few things we'll have to update. The latitude mm -hmm. and longitude, and uh, we'll give the path of the initialization file that we created for the Danube Basin. Mm -hmm. yeah, and in yes. fact, have to update several of the paths. So perhaps we could open up this settings file beside the settings file we're regularly using for the Danube Basin. Okay, excellent. Okay. Um, yeah, let's scroll down to file paths. In the left version of the settings file, our regular Danube settings file. And we can copy everything over. Or from exactly from path route to path water to map. Great. And we scroll down just to mask outlet. And just to the next section, we'll copy this longitude, longitude, latitude also engages. The one last thing we'll update today is this initialization file. Oh, in fact, several things along the way as we go through. So if we scroll down slightly to time-related constants, 
this we don't have to copy exactly because here we were going from 1901 to 2019. But here we're just going to do a spin up. So the first day we want the model to start comparing discharge is the first day of the year 2000, as we just decided to use the last uh, year 2000 from. So in fact, let's put spin up to the first day of the year 2000. So spin up the first day when outputs will be created. Mm -hmm. And step end will be the last day of 2010. For step start, let's make it from 1990. Let's make it for this example from 1998. First day of 1998. This will be a sort of um, warm up of the model. We have a warm up using the initialization file we created uh, in previous sessions. But each run of this model will have different parameters that will affect somehow how the whole model responds with itself. Mm -hmm. So we want to have a couple years or several years for the model to warm up under these new conditions with these new calibration parameters. Mm -hmm. Yes. I hope you can hear me all right with the, the resonance of the church bells. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. <laughs> I have them as well. <laughs> OK, but what's most important here, no matter how long the step start or the warm up period is, just as long as we're doing the spin up, from the first day of when we have told the model to compare the outputs of discharge to the model. So this looks mm -hmm. great. Just in this next section, initial conditions, we'll go load initial equals true, basically copy the what we have on the left settings file in our regular Danube settings. Mm -hmm. So just the init load and the load initial equals true. It should be also adjust this, mm -hmm. adjust this, yeah. Okay, now if we scroll down to the calibration section. Wait, on this one? This is fine. This is just to save an initial file when we're preparing the model, but for okay. this we'll set it to false. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the init save is fine because it won't be saving anything. So what you notice here is the main difference between the calibration and the regular settings file. Um, so let's scroll down a little bit on the right. We see crop correct. We see crop underscore correct equals percent sign crop. So what the calibration scheme does is it will give a value for crop correct and many other values by uh, running the model several times with a different range of these parameters. So we see on the left it's fixed at 1.11. Well, through the calibration, it'll give it a range of values, sometimes let's say around 1.1, sometimes around 0 0.8. We give the range of these parameters in a separate file that we can go through at another time. We'll just keep these as they are standard for now. So what the model will do, the scheme will do, is wherever we see percent and then the name of a variable, replace this with an actual value that it's experimenting with throughout the calibration. What you also notice is it says here this out underscore directory. So every time it runs the model, it will create a folder uh, where it puts the specific outputs from this model run into this folder. And to make the model run faster, we're only going to take a single kind of output, which is just discharge at a specific station. That's something to note in just a moment. And this out underscore TSS, we've been taking out underscore map which gives us maps. And we've been using this to look at the water cycles and look at maps of these outputs. But to make it run really quickly, we're just going to take a time series or simply a text file that gives outputs at a specific location. And in fact, that's where I want to change something above. We want to, uh, if you'll scroll up slightly, we're going to, where we had the longitude and the latitude, if we scroll in the other direction towards the top. Yeah. <laughs> the mouse. There's many things I'm also thinking about to walk through with calibration. So if we hop around a little bit, uh, forgive me, <laughs> and scroll up just a little bit higher. Great. So this gate, so this mask map, we're going to keep the same because this is the outlet of the Danube Basin we've chosen, and so it'll model the whole Danube Basin. Mm -hmm. But 
for gauges, let us put the location of the specific station that we have discharge information for. Oh. Uh. This is held in the original download of the, uh, of the CSV or the original download of the observation data. I see. We, I hope we didn't overwrite this, so we'll have to find. Mm, no, I think. Okay, the original one is in here. The text file, yes. The location is right here. Let's take the longitude, space, latitude, and put this into gauges. Now there's um, there's several other things that would be interesting to walk through, but I think we can save them for another time and just see how running the calibration works with everything we set up just now. Mm -hmm. Or we'll get some messages from the calibration scheme, but this is enough to start with. So let's save this. Okay, and Let's go then to the calibration folder again. Somehow I don't notice the sounds of planes when I'm not recording a video with you, but now I somehow notice them every few minutes. I wonder if we were to record our whole lives, if we would always somehow be hypersensitive to the noise around us. Could be. I feel somehow hypersensitive to the noises around me now. <laughs> or maybe just out of curiosity, let's go into this param ranges.csv So here and we're just going to yeah and we can open this up. We're just going to use the standard calibration parameters that we're using generally in CWM and we'll go through them in detail at another point. But you see this crop correct. It's going to range between 0 0.8 and 1.8. Uh, crop correct crop correct uh, scales or multiplies uh, the regular crop the regular reference of apotranspiration and crop coefficient to either increase or decrease the amount of water that plants are using. The soil depth factor either increases or decreases or scales the depth of soil. And let us go to the other ones in detail later. Just to give you an idea, we can put any parameter in here generally. We can create parameters to scale other parameters. It's, it's really flexible. This is somehow just a standard set of parameters we can use to calibrate with you. But just to show you, here is the list of parameters we'll be calibrating, and here is the range they'll go between. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good to have an idea. Okay, let's close out of this. And in the calibration folder, perfect. Let us simply dub our could you right click on 1A, right click, and then we'll click edit. Ah, oh, okay. So this batch file, so we've always been opening up a command prompt and opening Python in this way. But what we can start doing from now on is just creating these batch files where we can just double click to run the Python script. So here it's, when we double click it's going to call python it's going to go into the folder script start running the script calibration underscore single and it's going to look for the settings underscore calibration file that we were just playing with so let's close out of this and see what happens when we double click on 1a yeah <laughs> great we have that to way. call something called SciPy. You can press any key to continue. It'll close the full, it'll close the terminal. And let's open up a command prompt. Uh, we can open up in this folder, but we can open it up anywhere. 
and let's install sidebar. Uh, yeah, but generally or on my ah, folder, again. because usually we were using, uh, yeah. No, this is perfect. I'm so happy you brought this up again. We'll have to change the bat file just slightly as a result of this. Thank you for bringing mm. that. Mm -hmm. Let's open up your still, virtual think, environment. Yeah, still I think we need to install it because we never could. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay, yeah. I'm, I'm so thankful you keep bringing this up. It's such great practice. <laughs> uh, is it called? Yeah. S C I P Y. Like this? Perfect. Or maybe we already had it. So, in fact, it was oh, just a oh, reminder. Okay that we weren't using the virtual environment. But it's perfect, because batch files work a little bit differently with virtual environments. So if we could, we'll have to edit this in two spots. So yeah, if we edit this, you can create a line above this one. Just a blank line above it, yeah? And we'll type in call, C-A-L-L. -L. And then what you're familiar with, space, work on space, the name of the virtual environment, Sylvia. Great, let's save this and we'll have to change this in one one more spot. I, I close it? Yes. Okay. Let's go into templates underscore C what M. And we're just using the batch file, the first one. So could you right click and edit this one? Exactly. Call, work on. Now, if we understand this next command, this dot dot means go up a folder. So we're in templates and of course, mm -hmm. it's asking us to go up one. Dot dot means go up one. Dot dot slash dot dot means go up two folders. So we're going up four folders and then running the script run underscore cwhatm.py. So we're in templates under c1m. Going up one takes us to calibration. Going up one takes us to toolkit. Going up one more takes us to cwhatm. Ah, we have to go up four because what happens is this batch file will be created in another deeper folder for the specific model run. So this looks correct. Okay. Let's save this and see what other messages we get. Yeah, so now double click 1A. Great. Okay. Oh. We Maybe will. This we have to install them. Uh, yeah, so in this one, we have to install Deep, which is in fact a, uh, an evolutionary algorithm we use in the calibration process, which we definitely won't have yet. Pip install. Just a year ago, it was more confusing to install Deep with Python 3.10 or later, but they fixed this. Now it works just with pip install again. Ah, oh, great. Which is convenient. Okay. Maybe we can just close out of this. All right, let's see what messages we get this time. Another package. Yeah. Hmm. All right, this is, this is good news so far. What we read right here is your computer has eight nodes. So it can somehow process eight things in parallel. Mm -hmm. That's what this first number is representing. And this two is saying, we're asking your computer to use two of those nodes at once. Mm -hmm. We change these, we change the number of nodes that your computer will use in the settings file, the settings and for calibration. We, we didn't change them here. They're just set at standard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it's possible. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you were um, leaving for the day, uh, you could set this to use all eight nodes of your computer. But if you tried to do this now, your computer would be very sluggish. Um, so I, I think if you're working on the computer at the same time as the calibration is running, then you could use like four, leave half the computer free. But right now we're just experimenting. Uh, I think the model runs quite quickly. Since we're not getting any messages right now, it means the model just, is is running. But ah, okay. We Should I just try to press enter. And see no, just just no. leave it alone. In fact, um, 
we may get some more messages because when the model tries to compare, uh, right now it's not creating outputs. It's just in this spin-up period. Mm -hmm. Once it creates outputs, maybe we get some different messages that we have to change something. But right now we just wait. There's one thing else we can look at. If we go into the calibration folder. Mm -hmm. Let's go into runs underscore calibration. Okay, so you see here two folders were created, 001 and 003. You can open them up, open up one of them. So your model, your computer is running two models of C1M right now, or let's say two settings files of C1M. Let's open up this settings file. Yeah, and scroll down to the calibration section, and we'll see that there are actual numbers instead mm -hmm. of the percent prop variable name. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. well, that's the whole idea of this. It's going to run the model um, many times, again, determined in the settings file of the calibration, and each time replacing the, the percent variable name with an actual value. Okay, so we close out of this. Wait, can I open the other one? Just for the user? Yeah. Could you open up the terminal again? We just sort of have it in the background. Okay, so while this is showing us nothing new is good, um, if the model runs successfully, it'll give us the titles of the folders that it just ran. Okay. Maybe let's meet back in a half an hour and see how this is progressed. Yeah. Okay. Sure, I'll let you know. <laughs> okay, this is going this is going well. I'm happy for this. <laughs> okay, so let's meet back in half an hour. Okay, Mikael. See you soon. See you later. Bye. Guten Tag, Silvia. Buongiorno. <laughs> Good afternoon. <laughs> Buongiorno. Could we look at the current status of the calibration? So it's running, but it takes time to finish. Cool. So it looks like we've done 15 runs of the model, which I, it looks like the first generation. What this means is this KGE stands for a Kling Gupta efficiency. It's a way of rating how similar the simulated results are to the observed results. The ah, closer the number is like to one. Percentage? It's like a, the the best is one. As soon as it's better than negative 0.4, it means it's doing better than just maybe like a random model. Um, and it can go all the way to negative infinity. Mm -hmm. Right away, let's let's where this gets described a little bit more. Let's Google C what M Yasa. And we'll come to the see what a manual that walks through this in some detail. Yeah. And perfect, the first link, see what m.yasa.ac.at. And the menu on the left, if you scroll down slightly. Yeah, scroll down just a bit. And we're looking for number 11 on the left, the calibration tool. So this talks about this deep that we downloaded the evolution algorithm. Then it talks here, this calibration method. It talks about this mm -hmm. efficiency. Okay. Uh, if we scroll down further, So here's for some some light reading for later. Ah, but if we scroll down later, yes. we can. Ah, Euclidean distance. Uh, another popular way to see if observed or simulated discharge is near or less near is this Nash-Sutcliffe efficiency. But mm -hmm. 
what seems to be better practice now is this Klinggupta efficiency. But really, we can just look at all ways of comparing them. Um, we need not be too specific on the objective function we choose. But specifically for this cali calibration scheme, we're looking, we're using the Klinggupta efficiency. But in the scheme itself, we can also change this to be the Nash Sutcliffe or simply to be like correlation. This is also specified in the setting part? Uh, changing the objective function is actually done within the Python script itself. Ah, okay, so within so the Python script. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I would say that the standard is just to leave it as the Clink Gupta efficiency, but we can, of course, talk at a later point how to update this. Mm -hmm. Let's scroll uh, even further down and we'll see a description of the sort of basic calibration parameters, or what we call here the suggested calibration parameters. So we see a snow melt coefficient, the crop factor, which is the one we discussed recently that scales the crop of evapotranspiration, mm -hmm. soil depth factor, which increases or decreases the depth of soil, preferential bypass flow. So when water falls onto the surface of the earth, some of it soaks into the soil and then percolates through the soil. But another way that water uh, goes from the surface right into groundwater is called preferential flow. The idea is that you might have fractures uh, or more like preferential paths within the soil, like root paths, or even uh, water itself can pull itself along specific uh, lines of flow. So there is a, an increased passage of water directly from the surface into groundwater. This is what we try to cover with preferential flow. Uh, infiltration capacity relates to uh, soil moisture flow or unsaturated unsaturated um, flow. Let's let's pass through these for now and come back to them at a later point. But just to show that this is a this is the list of the calibration parameters that we're currently using in the calibration, and the ranges for these that we're taking in the parameter ranges come either from literature or experience of calibrating the model so that these results end up within reasonable ranges that compare to observations. Like evapotranspiration of this crop correct goes between 0 0.8 and 1.8. But if we were to go all the way up to five, uh, we would get evapotranspirations of uh, amounts that perhaps would be very unreasonable for mm -hmm. the model. Calibration. So both a mix of experience, uh, physical boundaries and, and literature referencing these different parameters. Yeah, like real values that were observed for the, for the area. <laughs> and most of these calibration parameters are simply scaling the real values that we're putting in the model. So all the models have different uh, parameters for specific processes, like this channel manning coefficient discusses the roughness of a channel bed. Um, and here we're not actually choosing the actual roughness parameter, but more scaling the parameter that already exists in each cell of the model. Mm -hmm. Let's close this and go into the settings file for the calibration. Ready? Yes. Yeah, awesome. Okay, let's scroll to the bottom. Okay, what we see here is this pool limit equals two. This means that it is told to use two nodes on your computer. We discussed this earlier. There are eight nodes on your computer, and we've set it to two. The line above use multiprocessing. This says to use more than one node. So if you had set it to zero or false, it would only try to ever use one node on your computer. So now we're using two nodes for parallel processing. Mm -hmm. The next three, sort of generally the higher the number the the better the opportunity for the calibration to improve the results mm -hmm. yeah. How it works. yeah like the iterations exactly the iterations. so what we've seen so far is this mu which equals 16. it means the initial population will be of 16 members basically 16 different settings files will be run in the first generation when we looked okay. at the terminal we saw 15. So it seems like it's just finishing the 16th one and then it will jump to the next generation. We're using it does six generations. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yes. And the number, what they say, children of each generation is set in this lambda underscore. It's the eight. Mm -hmm. So 
sometimes we recommend that the very first generation has a larger population than every subsequent generation to have an initial pool that it can pull from. So the initial population we see is 16, but then so there's like 16 children of the first generation of generation zero. And then every generation from then on will have eight children according to this. Mm -hmm. This is sort of the smallest numbers we would recommend for this. And maybe when we meet again yeah. to do a longer calibration, we will experiment with increasing these numbers. But it's interesting to see what will come out of a, say, a shorter calibration as compared to a longer calibration. But I've played with number generations like above 30, an initial population of like 256 and a lambda, say, of, of around four. it takes to run something like that? <laughs> well, and the model that we're also playing with can be much slower if we're if we're coupled other models, it can it can take it it can take say a week. So uh, calibration is a is a generally a slow process, but in this case we'll have the calibration finished within a day. I I, mm -hmm. I guess. Maybe we could talk about now the batch file or why we updated the batch file in the first place in the templates underscore c what m. So we updated this one. Settings and we updated the uh, in templates. templates. Yeah, this run pivot. Okay, so we discussed this previously, briefly, off camera. <laughs> and uh, so what I understood is that this is the um, Common for the for running the calibration, so it says to run this uh, calibration single Python command and then with the setting file with this setting file. Then within this calibration, he has to run CWATM, and here comes uh, this rumpy but which is um, open. Yeah, which is the run of uh, CWOTM. Yeah, so this batch file ends up being in every single one of these subfolders mm -hmm. where each folder represents a settings file or a run of CWOTM. Yes, so it starts with this um, um, single calibration um but common and then it goes here it runs this calibration single pi and then within each run of calibration it runs this uh run p but with the model yeah yep. <laughs> and everything goes here yeah in these folders ah you see it started already with the yeah, second generation um, okay if we go back to the terminal, maybe we see a different message. Mm -hmm. Good. So the highest efficiency, Klingupta efficiency we had after generation zero is 0 0.572. Now uh, we Jeez. expect that generation, it should get better and better. But as soon mm -hmm. as it's above negative 0.4, we are seeing a model that is somehow more and more representing the observations or the simulated results are getting closer and closer to the observations. Okay, but there are like thresholds or ranges, um, reference ranges to say if this uh, key GE is good or exactly. So more again, good. <laughs> closer to one is one would be perfect. One is the best. Yeah. Negative infinity is the worst. And as soon as you get to negative point four, we're starting to say the model is representing. Uh, the observed discharge more than, say, a, a, a random model. OK, and then from there, it's just the closer it gets to one, the better it is, but not yeah. uh, specific. OK. Mm -hmm. OK, nice. And again, this is a single calibration, so we're just comparing discharge at one spot to observations from one spot. But the potential mm -hmm. is really to look at any of, even when we were looking at evapotranspiration or this total water storage, these could be used to calibrate or evaluate the model. We're already using it to evaluate, but what's interesting is with the standard calibration that we have for the global version, 
we are already seeing uh, well-represented results for total water storage and evapotranspiration. But after this calibration, it'll be interesting to go back and see how those results have been affected. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. Cool. Um, how long are you working today? Today? I, I guess we uh, won't finish this. this I, mean, I will work probably until 5.36, but yeah, <laughs> and how about it looks this? like this will take longer. How about we all, because 0.572 is already a well-represented model. We could already take this settings file. So mm -hmm. where did that come from? We see right here, this 572 came from the fourth 004. Let's go into that folder. This one. Mm -hmm. So there was no calibration. It was just like a random. This is the best of the random choice that came from the calibration scheme. Mm -hmm. So we could take this settings file. So maybe copy this. What I want to do is I want to create the same output we've been doing in the, the last meetings where we do the results from 1901 until 2019. Uh huh. With using these settings. With using the settings file. So it's not the final calibration, but we see it's already it's already doing quite well. So mm -hmm. we can always improve this later. But I'd be interested in running with this settings file from 1901 to 2019, and then we can present that figure tomorrow in the, on Wednesday in the meeting. Mm -hmm. Yes, sure. OK. Mm. Um, yeah, maybe here uh -huh. you can suggest me because I think when I opened last time GitHub, I think I created a new because before I had everything under Danube. Yep. Here I had see what I'm normal and see what I'm Earth 30 minutes. And then he created a new one here with seawater only. So if I want to have here also the seawater of 30 minutes, I have to do clone again, I guess, yes. To have it also in the new location. Oh, because we, we moved it somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, we can just I relocate see. it actually. If we oh. click the mm -hmm. locate button and just point to where it is currently. Oh, okay. Currently, this yes. Ah, okay, that was easy. Okay, thank you. Yeah, perfect. Okay, let's okay. Take, let's take that settings file and maybe just copy yeah. it over in here. Uh, where the thirty minutes or? Yeah, this the settings file from the zero zero four folder. Yeah, but to copy where in the see what I'm thirty minutes. Uh yes. Mm. Or, in fact, it. It doesn't matter. We can put it anywhere. Maybe it's nice to start a folder with a collection of different settings files. Because we can call what M from anywhere. So. Mm -hmm. no, I thought I had it still. Um, maybe we could just put an underscore yeah. between settings and under and sometimes the the white space between names. Um, yeah, can create problems. Almost that won't work. Sorry, I thought I it's just copy. Perfectly. Okay, no. Okay. Okay, let's open this up. And now, in fact, this is a nice ex um, opportunity to discuss the new output we've created. So we were always creating maps before, but in this uh, calibration, we were using this TSS file. Mm -hmm. Yes. So now this won't create a map, but we'll create simply. Actually, we can already see what this looks like. Could we go into that 004 folder?
and let's open up this dot CSS. The first one? Yeah. Just double click. And we can open it with uh, with Notepad. Or or even Excel. Yeah, no padded time for now. We can, when we create the figures, we can do it with Excel. But, so what we basically have is, we had a two-year spin-up period. So that's why you see the first day of output is on day 731. Mm -hmm. And then you just have at this spot that we uh, asked the model to give outputs for, the discharge daily in meter cubed per second. Mm -hmm. So we have this, which is daily, but in this folder, we've also asked C1M to create the monthly average. In fact, both will be interesting. Maybe the, the daily will be nice to see the extremes, but the monthly average will be nice when we're really going from 1901 to see these wider trends. Yeah, longer pattern. But this might be easier to directly put into Excel, for example, than the map, which we were then using the notebook to derive this. Mm -hmm. Cool. OK, so the idea is then to run with this settings file. We can still get the same outputs from 1901 till 2019. Is this the setting file? I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. The only thing we have to be sure of is the output folder. Yep. And since we're using the like the calibration settings files are a little bit different. If we scroll down at the beginning of the calibration section, we'll see the output folder. So just scroll until we get scroll down until we get to the calibration section. Out directory. Yep. Here. So this we just want to put in a different folder or set the output folder somewhere where you want this 1901 to 2019 output to go. Mm, yeah, let me create a new one. I guess you have a folder already called see what I'm outputs we could take advantage of. Yes. So remember. This. Ah, here. Mm -hmm. Okay, just Great. <laughs> so we'll take, so what we'll output is the daily discharge at the point that we have, at the point where we have the observations. Mm -hmm. Based on this, uh, the settings file of this uh, calibration run. Mm -hmm. Let us now just change the dates. Uh, ah, yes. Mm -hmm. So we said. Can we just confirm that just to make sure, do we have the end of 2019? Yeah, last time we did from 1901, 11, 1901, spin up equals none, and step end equals the last day of 2019. When the setup start was? 1901. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. OK. OK. Now let's save and run CWATM in this folder or open up. A, or let's go to the folder with the settings file in it. That's the practice we've been doing. 
Yeah. This... Uh, ah, sorry, I'm still in the output. Yes. <laughs> I was confusing you. <laughs> no, no, no. It's, it's just a lot of folders. <sighs> Sometimes I feel when we meet and discuss this online that it's as if I have no hands. Like mm -hmm. I can only use words to guide and I can't point at the screen. <laughs> I want, I want, I want to, I want to point at the screen or I, it's, it's wonderful practice for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, in person is different, of course. <laughs> it just goes then amazing. you couldn't create the videos in this exactly. way. Exactly. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, and uh, PR, PR, yeah, no, oh, you have yeah, then the location of C what M, yes. Slash run mm -hmm. or see what you got it. Yeah. Yeah. And a dot py. And then the name of the settings file. You got it. Mm. And then dash L. Yes. Thank you. You've pushed enter. It seems like we're waiting, right? I guess things could be going a little bit slower because you're you're muted. I'm oh, sorry, I don't know when I muted. Uh, no, yeah, I guess it's a bit slower because this, so the other is running. Hmm. But it, it looks great. Okay, so yeah, awesome. Things are good. Yeah, okay. okay. Uh, Calibration is running in the background. When that is finished, we can meet again to discuss running. So there was that 1A, but we can also run a number two, which produces graphics on the results of the calibration. How, mm -hmm. how Formed, it shows a time series. It's interesting, but we can do that together on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. um, and you won't, you won't have to worry about anything. So when the calibration finishes, you can just sort of let it be on the side. It's no work for now. Okay. Okay, perfect. I'll let you know when this is done. Cool. Um, yeah. And then maybe this is finished this afternoon and then we can create a graphic comparing this with the observations. And then we sort of have the whole trifecta, the evapotranspiration, the total water storage and the discharge from 1901. I do you assume we do you assume we see some decadal pattern with the discharge? Mm -hmm. Maybe. I guess we'll see. We don't have yes. to. Yes. I mean, uh, yeah, it's difficult to guess. Will be nice. <laughs> yeah. But we didn't see with the vapor transpiration. Exactly, so right? No we'll guarantee. <laughs> cool. Then uh, it, was, it was a great meeting with you, Sylvia. Till next time. Yeah. For me too. Cheers. See you next time.